Because if you use your faith as a seed by faith, see, you sow a seed in the natural, you sow a seed. Why? Well, in the spirit, you sow the seed of faith by saying. By saying, speaking the end result that you desire. Saying about yourself, saying about your situation, what God has already said. Saying and speaking and decreeing the desired end result. And then acting like it's so. Are you understand what I'm saying? And, the, and, the, and listen, listen, listen. Faith goes to work to create what you're saying. The fruit of your lips. But see, but see, the deal is, see, we have such creative power and ability in our tongue that regardless of what we say, we're going to have the fruit of our lips. So we need to make sure we're saying what God has said, because only then are we sowing faith. If we're saying something contrary to what God is saying, even though it's reasonable and logical and our physical senses support it, we're sowing fear. Fear will disconnect us from the anointing and, and, and make us subject to the present evil circumstances that we're up against. But faith connects us to the anointing, causing it to be released into our lives and to cause the good things God intended and promised to manifest in our life. When God's goodness is manifesting in your life, things are turning for the better, becoming as he intended. Goodness is accumulating and that's your victory and nothing shall be impossible for you no problem shall be impossible for you to overcome no opposition no sickness no disease no diagnosis no financial report shall be impossible for you to overcome because you have faith as a seed the harvest contained in 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 the seed of your faith is so much greater than the opposition you face that nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible for you. All we have to do is just begin to sow the seed by saying or speaking the word. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, okay. So, 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 so now let's look at. Ah, let's look. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, hallelujah. I just covered that, covered that. Okay, let's go to this. Go to this. Okay, this is a good one. Let's go to this. We'll jump off on this one. Go to Isaiah 40. Look at your neighbor and say, it's turning around. Say, things are turning for the better. Right now. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, listen, those things are turning for the better even as we are in the presence of the Lord hearing and receiving this word. It's turning for the better. Now, if we'll not abort our faith, but, the, but it continue to allow our faith to serve us, to continue to allow the seed to produce, to germinate, and, and to produce a harvest, right? That thing will cause things to turn for your good, for your better, so much so that you, you won't, when you look back on what was, you won't be able to recognize yourself. Now, you, be, you, you better receive that, man. I mean, come on. You, listen, when that thing finishes turning and reaches maturity and you reap the, you reap the harvest of what your seed of faith has produced, You'll look back at what was and you'll think, man, how, I, I, how did, I, I don't even recognize, I don't even recognize that. I mean, that is so, so far away and removed from what God's will is for my life. How did I, how did I even ever live there in these conditions? Because things will have turned so much so. No. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's happening. It's happening. You found Isaiah 40? Let me, let, let me find it. You there? Listen, listen, listen. <clears throat> We're supposed to be victorious. In every situation, all the time, no matter what. And, and your faith connects you to an anointing that's big enough and powerful enough 
to fix whatever needs fixing. If it's too high, it'll level it. If it's too low, it'll fill it in. If it's crooked, it'll make it straight. You find Isaiah 40? Look at verse 4. Well, I'm going to start at verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain and smooth. See, do you understand what God is saying? This is what your faith will do when you release it and sow it. If you're in a valley place, right? If you're low, but it's, it's going to fill it up to where you're level. If it's too high, it's going to bring it low. If it's crooked, it's going to be straight. If it's rough, it's going to be smooth. Why? So that there's nothing impeding your progress and your walk with God. See, you're not expending energy, getting drained and wore out and suffering a, a depletion from going up, down, up, down, cricket, 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 cricket. No, no, no. It's going to make everything like it ought to be. See, that's why we got to watch some of these songs we sing. And, I, and listen, I get it. I can appreciate the spirit in which a lot of our songs were written and sang. And, and sang. But we got to listen to the words because we're releasing stuff we really don't want. Nobody in their right minds wants to climb up the rough side of the mountain, especially when you can speak to the mountain and have it be made low. Nobody wants to be in the valley so low, especially when you can speak and it come up high. Are you understand what I'm saying? But see, every generation, every one of us, regardless of our age or, or whatever, we walk in the light we have. We walk in the revelation we have. So that's why I can appreciate the spirit in which it was sung. But as we grow in revelation, knowledge, and understanding and can see better, we need to sing better and live better. Amen? Now look what he said. Look what he said. Look what, look what happens. Look what happens when the, when the valley is exalted, when the mountain and hills are made low, when the crooked is made straight. And the rough places smooth and plain. It says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Now, I'm just going to stop right there. I'm just going to stop right there. The go I'm not, not for the mess. I ain't through preaching. I'm talking about with that verse. I'm talking about, <laughs> talking about with that verse. <laughs> no, I, I ain't. <laughs> the glory, the glory of the Lord. You know what the glory is, right? You know when Moses asked God to see his glory? And God put him in the cleft of the rock and he allowed his goodness Amen. to pass by in front of him. That's real, that's real, that's real. The goodness of God manifested in your life is the glory of God being revealed. And see, 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 God, God will set you up and just a lot. He, listen, listen, God knows what we need when we need it and he knows how to get it to us. All he needs from us is a yes to him when he speaks. Amen. Our yes will position us in a place to have the glory revealed, Amen. to have his goodness to pass in front of us. I remember, I remember the start of this year back in January, I think, we, we, when God showed up and visited and manifested himself in this place. I remember I was standing right here. There were people at the aisle, and the Lord said, walk down in the middle of them so my goodness, so my presence in you would get on them. And I walked by. And the lady standing right here, she said, when I walk by, the presence, she felt the presence of God. I'm telling you, the world is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God for us to show up and walk in our sonship so that the glory can be revealed. So that the goodness of God can be manifested and imparted to people and prick their hearts so that in their hearts, their love and desires are moving towards God and the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. All of which comes from the seed of our faith. Of our faith. Of us hearing God's word so that faith can come. 
of us speaking and confessing God's word so that it's deposited and built up in abundance. And then from the abundance out of the mouth, so that it comes forth in life. Comes forth in life. Listen, I don't care how bad the situation is in your life. You got a seed that'll cause it to turn for the better. You got a seed that'll cause the evil present circumstances in your life to turn for the better. I don't care how long you've been in that state, it's begun to turn for the better already. It's turning for the better. Amen? Praise God. Okay, okay, okay. Now, 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 now. That, I believe, would be the, 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 the intro. Let's go to Luke 17. Don't, don't feel bad. Don't get upset. It's, it's, it's all right. It's getting gooder and gooder. Praise God. Are you ready? You in Luke 17? Okay. No, no. I'm sorry. Luke, Luke, go to Luke 21. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. You in Luke 21. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So this is, this is, this is, see, all right. This is right where we are right now. This is, this is where we're living today in this hour. This is right where we are. Amen. This is why this word, things turning around for, our, for the better, for our good, for the better. It's, it's a turning point. This is a prophetic word for this hour right now. Now, let's start here in verse, uh, okay, Jesus is talking about some things that are going to happen. Verse 7, they said, and they asked him, saying, Master, uh, but what, what, when shall these things be? What sign will, will there be when these things should come to pass? Now look at verse 8. Okay. And, G, and, and he said, Jesus said, take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ or I am the Christ, the representative of Christ, right? Uh, the time draweth nigh, go ye not therefore after them. Let, let me read that from the, from the Amplified. Verse 8, uh, be on your guard. Be careful that you're not led astray. For many will come in my name, appropriating to themselves the name Messiah, which belongs to me. Now, now, that, now that's not necessarily meaning somebody going to come back and claim to be Jesus. But that's happening right now because we have all kinds of folk mm, getting up preaching and prophesying about the times we're living in and the doom and the gloom that is pending. There'll be a lot of people, a lot of ministers, a lot of preachers claiming to have a word from the Lord for this hour, right? And say, look, this is what's happening. This is what you need to be doing. Are you following what I'm saying? And I mean, I've seen, man, I'm telling you, I have seen and heard some things that are just out there. And you know what I mean? I mean, and, I mean, and, and even in, uh, 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 even in one case, the brother was prophesying what was going to come, and then, but, but, but you would think, okay, okay, so to, to, avert, to avert this and change this prey, you know, no, 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 you know what the solution was? Load up on ammunition. Now, come on, that, that, ain't, that ain't God. Are you understand what I'm saying? Are y'all following? Okay, 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 let me get it back, let me get it back. Okay, thank you, Jesus, okay. All right, so look, 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 look. Let's, let's just go with the Amplified. He said, be on your guard and be careful that you're not led astray, for many will come in my name, appropriating to themselves the name Messiah, which belongs to me, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Jesus says, do not go after them. Or in other words, do not receive that word. Do not adhere to, put any trust or confidence in that preaching. You follow me? Now let's just stick with the Amplified for a while. Look at verse, look at verse 9. And when you hear of wars, and insurrection, disturbances, disorder, and confusion. Disturbances, disorder, and confusion. We don't have to hear about it. We see it. All right. Look, look, look what he says. He says, do not become alarmed and panic stricken and terrified. For all this must take place first. But the end will not come immediately. In other words, with all this going on, we got a lot of folk prophesying that the end, no, no, the end is not yet. 
Matter of fact, if you, did, if you look at this same uh, passage over in Matthew, it starts off saying it's not the end, but what it does say, it's the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. So, so okay, so Jesus is saying it's the beginning of sorrows, but he's not saying that as, in order to say to us that it's God's will that there be sorrow. The sorrow that this is the beginning of, the beginning of sorrows, the conditions and circumstances and situations that are presently going on in the earth that generate sorrow is not the will of God. Yet these conditions do exist in the earth. But it's not, it, they're not existing because it's God's will for it to exist. Now let's think about this for a minute. Where's the first place you hear the word sorrow in Scripture? Think about it. First, first time you, the, the, the word sorrow is used in scripture is after Adam sinned. After, there you don't hear nothing about no sorrow until Adam sinned. See, it was through Adam sin that death entered the world. The, the earth came under a curse be, because of Adam's sin. Now, once the earth came under that curse, now you hear sorrow. He said, he said to Adam, he said, because you're hearkened to the voice of your wife, you didn't listen to me. He says, curse the earth for your sake. He says, in toil and sorrow. Right? So sorrow is equated with the curse. Sorrow is a manifestation of the curse. Any condition or circumstance presently in the earth that is, that is related to sorrow is a manifestation of the curse. Which it was never God's will for it to be in the earth. And it's not his will for his people to, to, to live under the effects of sorrow. You got it? Now, 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 now. So it's a part of the curse. But we know from Galatians 3 and 13 and 14 that Christ redeemed us from the curse. Being made a curse for us. Why? So that the blessing of Abraham would be our blessing. So that the same way Abraham was endued with God's power, lived by faith in God's promise and kept God's word and experienced God's best. So that that same endowment would be on us. We were redeemed from the curse. Now, now say this, say, say Christ redeemed me from the curse. Say I am redeemed from the curse. But the earth is not redeemed from the curse. See, see I, want, I, want to make, I want to make a distinction. You and I, we are redeemed from the curse, but the earth is not. So the curse is still affecting the earth. It's still manifesting in the earth. That's why there is sorrow yet present in the earth. And sorrow is a part of the curse. So the curse is in the earth, and it's having an adverse effect on the conditions of the earth. But because we're redeemed from the curse, we don't have to live under the sorrow. Even though it's present in the earth, it can be present, yet we can prevail over it because we're redeemed from it. Revelations 22, verse 3 talks about, uh, uh, talks about when, when in, in, in heaven, uh, the, new, the new Jerusalem and all that, it says there shall be no more curse. Right? Well, you say, well, that's in heaven. Well, listen, we know the curse is in the world. But because we're redeemed, it doesn't have to be in our world. Because, see, 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 if there's no more curse in heaven and Jesus taught the disciples to pray and live in a manner so that God's will be done on the earth as it is in heaven, then God's will for his people is to live free of the curse in the earth. Just like there's no curse in heaven, ain't ought not be no curse in our lives in the earth. The Bible tells us what is it in Ephesians chapter three? It talks about how the whole family of God in heaven and in earth. We have our name derived from the Father. So the name derived from the Father is an inheritance to the family of God. Those of us that are yet present in the earth, as well as those that have already gone on to heaven. Well, just because they've gone on to heaven, they're not entitled to a better, they're not entitled to any more of the inheritance than we are. So if they're in heaven where there is no curse, and we got the same name and same inheritance, 
We can live in the earth free of the curse. Victorious over the curse. So even though there are conditions and situations presently in the earth that, that create and cause sorrow, by faith, by faith, we overcome the sorrow. We overcome the curse that's manifesting in the earth. We live in victory over it by our faith. Are y'all following? So this is not the end of time. It's just the beginning of sorrow. But we don't have to trip because we've been redeemed from it. We've got victory over it. Now, now, look, look, let's just go on a little further. Back, back, Luke 21. Look at, we're, we're still in uh, the, the Amplified. Uh, look at verse 10. Then he told them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be mighty and violent earthquakes and various places and in various places, famines and pestilences. And then the Amplified describes that as plagues, malignant and contagious or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. Are we not living in that day? So can we say, we, we can see, we can say it, right? That what I just read, that, 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 that would define COVID-19, right? So COVID-19 is presently existing in the earth, right? But its existence is a part of the beginning of sorrows, which is a curse that we've been redeemed from. So it's not here out of the will of God. It's not here because it's God's will that it be here. It's here because we have an adversary, an enemy to our faith, and it's part of the judgment that's coming on the land because sin is filling up in the land. Gross darkness is coming upon the land. It's being filled up with sin. And so judgment is coming upon the land. Are you following? Say that said Christ has redeemed me from the curse and its effects that are in the earth, including COVID-19. Now listen, listen, listen. Any harmful, evil, negative effects of the virus and or the pandemic it's caused right now if 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 you under the sound of my voice have experienced or experiencing any harmful negative effects of that pandemic there's an anointing release that's turning things for the better it's turning for the better it's turning for the back. Now, now, I do need to say this to keep things balanced. You have to cooperate yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. See, we can't profess or claim to be in faith with, just by doing right confessions, but living contrary to the commandments that the promise we're confessing is tied to. In other words, it ain't going to do me no good. I can, I can confess till I turn blue in the face. God meets all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If I'm not complying with the commandment that that's tied to. I can confess, yeah, it is given unto me. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over to me and give it to my bosom. But if I'm not giving, it's not happening. And, and, we, and Minister Keisha ministered a good word this morning, a grown folk word about walking in love. So, so, so we can try to do the things of faith, but if we're not walking in love, the faith ain't working. Now, now not only does that scripture refer to how we treat people, but, but our faith working by love. Yeah, it works as we walk in love and show love, but, but that definition also replies to our faith worketh by our revelation of how God loves us. See, the, the greater your revelation that God loves you is, the greater your faith can work. 
Listen, the more you're persuaded that God loves you, the more you're going to place a demand on from God. You're going to ask some things from God on a bigger scale as your revelation of God's love for you grows. You'll make decisions with greater boldness and greater declarations as God's love for you grows inside of you. You'll make decisions like, don't worry about it, just do it, just buy it, just get it. Because, because of how your personal revelation that God loves you, that he's willing to use his power on your behalf, if for nobody else, if it was just you. Who glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? What verse did I leave off? Okay, where was that? Verse 11? Okay, yeah, plagues, malignant, contagious, infectious, epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. And there will be sights of terror and great signs from heaven. But previous to all of this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, turning you over to the synagogues and prisons. And you shall be led away before kings and governors for my name's sake. All right, help me, Lord. <clears throat> now, I'm just. I'm just speaking for me. I'm not speaking for other pastors. I'm not speaking for other ministry leaders in here. And I'm just speaking for me because he. <clears throat> I got to walk in the light I got. I'm going to be judging head accountable for what what God shows me, what he shows me. I'm, I'm going to be judged by on what I do with it, how I steward over it, how I apply it. Same with you. Right. That's why if, if there's anybody watching this virtually and you don't have no sincere intentions of trying to walk this out, you better just turn it off. Because there'll come a day where the, every scripture I'm speaking will speak up and testify against you. 